It has a skull, but no spine. Tiny holes run along the sides of its wriggling body. Some for breathing, and some for sliming. But its most bizarre feature is its mouth. Like something out of an alien movie. Octopi are generally considered the most intelligent invertebrates on the planet, but coconut octopi are top among their eight tentacled relatives. While many creatures use objects for shelter, only a few use tools to achieve a certain objective. And these creatures are the only invertebrates known to do so. They gather and carry their shelters and keep them for future use. This is considered very sophisticated behavior. In fact, coconut octopuses are so refined, they don't just crawl, swim, and jet propel themselves like other cephalopods. No, these tentacled creatures walk on two legs, almost like a human does. But unlike humans, Octopi don't have a rigid skeleton or opposing muscles to allow for walking. But who cares how they do it? For they've got a much more terrifying use for these legs. Hidden in ambush, she has only to wait for the right moment. She uses her whole body to overwhelm her prey. In place of a mouth, she has a razor-sharp beak in the center of her tentacles. As powerful suckers restrain the crab, she pierces its body, injecting a venomous compound to paralyze her prey and digestive enzymes to soften it up. When dinner's ready, she'll suck out the soft bits. All that will remain will be an empty shell. In the 20th century, whales on the Sea of Okhotsk were hunted nearly to extinction. Now, Whaling has ended here, and the large mammals have begun to return. Humpback whales are the most common visitors, but other species also venture into this remote sea. Orcas. Orcas live in family pods of 10 or more, led by a dominant female. The whales are constantly on the move, that cloud is what they're after, a banquet. Just hatched in a nearby inlet, the herring are too young to reproduce. Two years will pass before they seek their traditional spawning grounds, if they survive. Orcas are graceful, intelligent hunters. The orca pod drives the herring together. Then, the largest member unleashes its powerful tail, killing or stunning dozens of fish with one mighty blow. All that remains is to reap the harvest. The orcas gorge while they can. The herring will soon disperse, and weeks may pass before the pod finds such riches again. Mm. 
Like orcas, humpback whales also hunt in groups, but with different tactics. First, some humpbacks dive under the swarm to drive it toward the surface. Others encircle the swarm in a ring of bubbles. Then they swim through the bubble net, maws agape. Grooves in the mouth filter out water, leaving hundreds of fish caught in a single gulp. Two species, two tactics, same success. This is the fishing spider. This spiky-legged spider haunts fish pond residents the world over. Its good looks are enough to scare you to death. But it's its legs that are truly freaky. This bizarre arachnid not only walks on water, it can read the underwater world with its legs. Millions of tiny spikes detect vibrations on the water's surface. It can accurately judge where the movement is coming from, and even what prey item it is. A male lives in this section of the pond, and it's full of food. His back legs anchor him to the shore, while his super-powered feet get to work. Every little vibration is assessed. The fish was just out of reach. Walking on water is one thing, but this incredible spider can also breathe underwater. The waterproof hairs around the spider's abdomen create an air bubble. Its lungs look like the stacked pages of a book and draw the oxygen from the bubble. This incredible adaptation allows the fishing spider to breathe underwater. The fish may have been scared out of the spider's hunting zone, but now they're in the shallows. The fishing spider injects paralyzing venom into the fish, which slowly turns its insides into a nutritious soup. This prize catch is something worth bragging about. This hairy frogfish has better luck. She's an expectant mother and has more at stake than just an empty stomach. She tucks behind the coral and waits. balloons to 12 times its original size, creating a vacuum to suck in the prey. The entire process takes just one six thousandth of a second. Far too quick for the prey to react. It 
it's the fastest bite in the animal kingdom. The tagged hammerhead begins its search, scanning the sea floor for any signs of life. The stingray may be hidden beneath the sand, but it cannot hide from the incredible hunting senses of the great hammerhead shark. The shark waits for each sense to be triggered. Hearing, smell, sight, electroreception, and touch. The stingray has no other option but to bolt from cover. The shark uses its hammer to pin the ray down to the seafloor and tries to get a good bite. But the ray fights back. Finally, the hammerhead locks onto the wing to immobilize its prey. But with blood in the water, a large bull shark is also on the hunt. The hammerhead returns to finish off its meal. They make a sound, nothing like a normal horse. More like lip smacking. They do this while feeding and during courtship rituals. They are monogamous. Some species mate for life. The seahorse's partnership contains daily greetings and when the time is right, a romantic salsa. They greet each other as a way to confirm they are both still alive. And to synchronize their reproductive cycles. The female will place her eggs in the male's kangaroo-like pouch where he will fertilize them internally. And after about two weeks, out pops the fry. Contractions can last up to 12 hours. A male can give birth to over 2,000 baby seahorses. Clownfish deal with the problem of overcrowding by sharing space with another creature, gigantic anemones. They've formed a relationship in which both parties benefit. Anemones have tentacles that are packed with stinging cells. Most fish, touching one, get a very nasty sting. But not the clownfish thanks to the protective layer of mucus that covers its body. The clownfish keeps the anemone in good health by removing unwanted parasites. And in return, the anemone offers security. Its stinging cells ward off the sort of creatures which would otherwise threaten the clownfish. 
When the time comes for a pair to breed, that protection will be vital. A female may lay up to a thousand eggs on the rock beneath her anemone home. As she delicately attaches them, the male follows closely behind, fertilizing the eggs as he goes. A week will pass before the young are ready to emerge. Hatching only happens at night, so to record it, we have to use infrared cameras in a specialized filming environment. This is the very first time that this behavior has been filmed. With gentle encouragement from their father, the young are helped on their way. Once the little larvae are set free, they're on their own. They'll spend the first few weeks of their life developing in the open ocean. Lionfish are unwanted alien invaders in the Caribbean, and they are destroying native fish stocks. By spearing lionfish and trying to feed them to the sharks of the Hardinez Reef, Noel's plan is to encourage the sharks to start preying on them instinctively. It's taken time and patience. But at last, it seems to be working. Creatures of the Indo-Pacific, lionfish first arrived here in the mid-80s. Florida fish collectors are blamed. As specimens grew too big for their tanks, some were released into the waterways. A recent study of DNA evidence suggests that the whole plague can be narrowed to around a dozen lionfish that interbred. A large female can produce up to two million eggs per year that drift on the ocean currents before the spawn settle on the reef. So it didn't take long for a few aliens to become a scourge. Growing up to a foot long, protected by an array of highly venomous spines, and with a lifespan of up to 15 years, lionfish here have no natural predators to keep their numbers in check. As a result, they've spread at a prodigious rate. Voracious feeders, they take anything they can catch, not only small fish, but also the young of larger species. They have decimated native fish populations that have in places been reduced by over 80%. They are a particular threat in mangroves that normally provide a safe nursery for the young of many fish. And their spread shows no sign of slowing down. Changing the shark's feeding behavior could be the salvation of the reef. There are more than 3,000 known species of aquatic beetles. Among them, the great diving beetle, which lives in ponds and lakes throughout the northern hemisphere. Besides a streamlined body, its most obvious adaptation to underwater life is a pair of feathered rear legs that have evolved into oars and help it maneuver underwater. But without gills, the great diving beetle cannot breathe water and periodically has to come up to the surface in order to take in air. It traps the air beneath its wing case, which it uses like a scuba tank.
This bubble of air allows it to stay submerged for about 30 minutes. Like an underwater wolf, it hunts sick and weak water dwellers and also eats carrion. It has short but sharp mandibles and can inject digestive enzymes into its prey. This monstrous looking creature is the larval form of the great diving beetle. It's a fast, agile swimmer and also a voracious underwater hunter. But like the adults, it must return to the surface to breathe. In the spring, its main food source is tadpoles. However, after millions of years of success, these beetles are struggling. Dwindling amphibian populations in Central Europe make life harder for the great diving beetles. With food in ever shorter supply, who knows how long they will survive. At the bottom of the ocean dwells a bizarre looking creature a fish so ancient, it has remained unchanged for 300 million years. This is the hagfish. Its velvet smooth skin lacks scales and slithers along the ocean floor. It has a skull, but no spine. Tiny holes run along the sides of its wriggling body some for breathing and some for sliming. But its most bizarre feature is its mouth. Like something out of an alien movie. This jawless maw is made for mincing up dead bodies. Multiple rows of sharp teeth are packed on two bony plates. With its single nostril, it picks up the sweet scent of death. A feast has arrived. It has no fins, but its paddle-like tail makes light work of swimming. The hagfish latches on and its mouth goes to work. Flesh is ripped from the carcass and shoved down its toothy throat. Soon, it's a frenzy of multiple mincing mouths. And to keep other hungry onlookers at bay, the hagfish excrete copious amounts of slime into the water. A shy shark snatches one, but ends up with a mouthful of snot instead. In minutes, the hagfish will strip the carcass to bone. It may be months before they find another meal like this. <laughs> 